Hey, what's up everybody? Show you another Vetrex video here. As I've been working on this puppy and ran into a problem, which I was able to solve. Anyways, on that, I had to do with replacing the Vetrex integrator caps that have to do with the creation of your scan lines here for your graphics. Anyways, I thought maybe one of the capacitors was bad because I could not visually see the problem until I went over the board with a magnifying glass and spotted that one of the traces just had a very, very fine crack going through it, which could have happened when I was soldering or whatever. That's the only problem with working on these old systems. Stuff can lift off the board, especially a system this old, so you got to be really careful. But it didn't lift off completely, so basically I just went from the lead for that capacitor down the little trace line and just covered it with solder and problem solved. But anyways, uh, what it was doing is obviously it wasn't getting used to that one capacitor, but it was making everything crazy on screen. It wasn't like one of the common problems where you just get that dot in the center. What it was was about... I'd say two inches up and down, dead center and across was just all the graphics. Everything else was just blackened out. These looked nothing like that. Everything was squiggly. Any of the text like where it says game over, you could not read it. Just all that was unlegible. All the stars and stuff were all in the way. So it was just all crazy looking. So if you get one like that, that might be your problem that you have one of those capacitors that is blown. Anyways, for anybody that's in my country, I do not know if these guys will ship overseas or not. They do go through PayPal, so you may be able to get around that. I just have no idea how much it would cost to do that if you're like in England or whatever. But uh, cheap enough for this kit. It's only $3.59 because you're only replacing five capacitors. Anyways, show you here. Yeah, better to show you on a piece of paper. Those are what they look like. Until now, I have never seen those type before. Anyways, what they are are, uh, let's see, yeah, they're film capacitors. The ones that were in it originally. By the way, this one came from Puritan's Pride, as my mom gets a lot of her uh, herbs and stuff through them. This was from my dad when he was taking all his meds. Now that he's not here, I have stole all of his old pill boxes because they are awesome when you're doing these cap replacements, man. you got all these nice compartments to put your different capacitors in so everything's organized good. And if you got to buy one, they're cheap. Anyways. These are, they're calling them styrene caps. I think it's polystyrene. Otherwise, these are the ones that were in it. And thanks to this wonderful video, it's making it look like it's metal. It's not. They're a clear plastic, and then they have this, like, foil wrapped around on the inside. It's really weird looking. Until I opened up one of these Vetrex systems, I've never seen ones like this either. Anyways, those are what you're going to re be replacing. And definitely worth it. I mean, for that <laughs> small amount of cash, man, definitely worth it. Just be careful like anything else when you're replacing them. So, turn this around and show you where they're located. And there's plenty of videos showing on replacing the main capacitors and stuff and taking one of these apart. A couple of guys that got really good videos. Anyways, first thing you want to do if you're going to be working on this is to discharge the tube. Which, uh, every video that I watched on showing how to do that, including this, when they're doing it, I never hear the little pop or anything. Is it supposed to make like a little pop sound when it discharges the electricity? Because there's a lot of voltage in that puppy. It could basically turn you into a... So, 
You do not want to be extra special, so make sure you discharge that puppy. I will show you what I used, and it worked great. It's got a nice heavy screwdriver here, well insulated. And then uh, this was just one piece of wire with alligator clips. I cut it in half so I could double up on it just to <laughs> make sure that I'm safe. And then tied them on to this larger clip, which you can either clamp there or there. And that grounded it out really good. And on that popping sound, I only got it once, and that was when I was trying to figure out what the hell fucked up. So I had it on for a while, and then immediately wanted to work on it. And I also saw just a little bit of shock on that. So like, just a very small spark. Otherwise, uh, I've messed with this about five times so far and did the discharge thing on it the first time I did it. It had been sitting for a good month. But uh, other times, I'd maybe have it on the day before, but when I'd go to the, do the discharge, I didn't hear any pop, didn't see any spark or anything. So uh, on that, you do have a wire coming off this box right there going into your ground. I'm thinking that this may be set up to where it bleeds out faster than like you'd have on a TV. Which on a TV, definitely discharge it, man. TV, bigger screen, more voltage, whatever. It could really mess you up or kill you. So off that subject. Little boogers are located right there next to that chip. And uh... I did not take that board out. What I did was take out a screw right there and then another one on the corner. And on this plastic, there's a couple of notches. What worked for me just to lift it up enough without hurting the board, but be able to get my soldering iron under it and on top. Just to use the cap and then the main part of a ballpoint pen and just stuck it under there in those little gaps. And that lifted it up just enough to work on it. Then on this one, I replaced all the large caps and just a few of the small ones, mainly some down there, that I could get at easy without having to get around all this crap. Which, anything left, I've looked at them visually, they look good enough, like they'll last a while longer. And I'm not one of those types that plays the shit out of these. I'll get a hankering to play it, and then I'll be good for a few months, and then I'll maybe play it again. So, it's not something to where I'm going to burn it up having it on too much. Otherwise, this board only has a few caps, but from what I've seen, you got to take damn near everything apart to get at it. That is, looks like it's a real bitch to get out of there, mainly on the location of the screws, where you'd have to disconnect a lot of the wires. So, can't think of anything else that would make this screw up, because uh, both of my Vetrexes were working... <laughs> The only difference is uh, this one was well taken care of. And this is one of the original model Vectrex systems before uh, Milton ba Bradley took over and just changed the logos. But I did notice one of the guys that has a repair video doing the caps. I believe he's located in England or whatever. Anyways, he's got the Milton Bradley one. And as you can see, that is clear. I can see into it to spot the little clips. His, it's black rubber, man. You cannot see where the clips are. And he had a bitch of a time getting it out of that. Which on this, the clips are on each side. So if you push it to one side and kind of tilt it a little bit, you can carefully take it out and it's easy enough. Instead of trying to wiggle it out of there, which you are dealing with glass. And I have no idea how thick the metal ring is in this tube, but... It could be possible to damage it if you're really fighting with the thing. So be careful when removing that after you've done the whole voltage thing on it. So, almost there. Got a ways to go, but right now, good enough. Catch y'all later. Feel free to comment.